Hey, so this week what we're gonna do is try to smooth out the transition here for our high frequency horn. So let's uh, let's look at some options here. Okay, so if we look at this horn coming out of the, the woofer, there's a few things, uh, I'd call them issues actually. So um, you can see here the voice coil former um, is actually protruding out from the horn profile by about a quarter of an inch. And then it's also the cone is not connected to the very end of the former. It's actually uh, back by maybe an eighth of an inch. And so also um, we have these ridges. We can chamfer here, um, but still for high frequencies, it's not a smooth ride at all. So um, what I think I'm gonna do is I noticed some of the new coaxial drivers, they have like a, a plastic waveguide um, that is a lot smoother. And I think that addresses a lot of the issues that you see with the frequency response on these drivers. If you have a, a sharp ridge like this, then you're gonna get reflections back into the horn. And that's gonna cause all sorts of issues both with the frequency response the the uh, spectral waterfall plot it's going to be uh, not good so um, I'm a big fan of the Jean-Michael Ecliche horn profile so I'm going to attempt to build um, that uh, horn profile for this driver and, and see where we end up now um, I'm going to for the first time I'm going to try to do a prototype horn uh, using uh, paper and then I'm going to spray it with uh, some sort of an epoxy and so to design the horn it's going to be a, a Jean-Michael Lecliche horn uh, pedal horn and if you don't know what a pedal horn is it's basically segments um, of, of uh, it's not perfectly uh, conical or smooth it's made out of segments um, so we'll show you what that looks like on the next the next uh, step of this video is to design it in CAD software uh, and the software that I have is SolidWorks so let's let's look at that next Okay, so what we wanna do is take some measurements of the throat and the exit here. We're gonna have our diameter and then the, the exit angle. So I just have my protractor here and my ruler and I just, I measured it just coming out and then I found that it was around a 20 degree exit angle. And then I'm just gonna measure the, the, the exit here, the diameter, and uh, so we can start doing our design. Okay, so to get started, what we're going to do is uh, use SolidWorks to design the horn. And I know most of you don't have SolidWorks, but any um, CAD application that allows you to flatten your uh, shapes into a flat layout is going to be suitable. So I'm just going to um, go online and I'm going to uh, look for the, the Jean-Michael Lecliche horn profile um, because there's I don't have the mathematical um, profile. Or formula to do this so I'm basically gonna find the shape online and then I'm gonna trace it so um, this is it here um, you can see here it's got the um, it rolls right around and I like this horn design because it's great at minimizing edge diffraction at the the, the mouth of the horn and I've built a couple of these and they they sound fantastic so um, what we want to do with this 12 inch coaxial is copy this so I'm gonna steal this picture I'm gonna paste it into SolidWorks okay so what I've done here is I've created a sketch and in SolidWorks and I've just traced the profile of the I've, I've sized the image I've, and I've traced it here as best as I could um, and so uh, from the sketch I, I created an extruded feature so if I uh, exit the sketch you'll see here my extruded feature and so I don't need the picture anymore um, I've got my shape that I need we know I've developed it as a, a 2 inch throat and a 20, 20 degree exit angle so, um, so the next step is to turn this profile into a pedal horn um, and uh, before we do that we need to uh, turn this into a sheet metal part and I'll do that next. Okay, so to convert this shape into a sheet metal, we're gonna go to insert, sheet metal, and we're gonna do convert to sheet metal. And it's gonna be looking for um, kind of like the main part of the sheet metal that everything's gonna be bent from. So I'm just gonna pick the throat of the horn, which is this piece here. It defaults to a standard thickness. Right now it's 
uh, 10 millimeter thick. We're, we're just gonna do our 30 thou, 30 thou thick. Just get rid of these notifications. Restart now. No, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and it's probably going to come up with me picking a time. Anyways, back to this. So we're going to be uh, picking the bend edges. So you imagine if you had this in a brake press, uh, which we're not doing. But essentially, this is what this feature is. Assuming that your part is made out of sheet metal and you're going to be using like a brake press to, to bend it. Um, which I guess you could make a metal horn like this. But... Um, we're going to be making it a paper, same kind of concept. We're just going to be kind of folding, folding the edges. So we go along, make sure I pick the right edge. It's always got to be the inside edge here because that's like where the brake press would be pushing on. So anyways, just go around, bear with me here. So we go around. Okay. And then that's it really. Um, we've defined our sheet metal part. It's got all the pieces of information that it needs. The other thing that we can do is we can put in a bend radius, which um, that would be like your brake press, the part that's pushing on that, that edge, the diameter that you want. And we don't really care about that. We're just gonna make it as small as possible, which 10 thou, whatever. So we click okay and it's gonna convert it to a sheet metal part. Now, why is this important? Well, look at this. So we've created this piece. Um, we can actually now go into to, into my feature tree and, and flatten it. So we just unsuppress the flat pattern and it flattened it out. Now that might not seem like a big deal. However, when we develop this into a pedal horn, this uh, is gonna be a special shape, which can only be derived uh, using this particular feature within SolidWorks. So we're gonna take it back to its original shape and then what we're going to do is we're going to do a, a radial pattern uh, do an eight pedal radial pattern and um, so I'm um, going to cut through cut through the horn here I just got to pick the plane that I want so we're going to cut right through this so going down to the right center axis of our throat now we're looking directly into the horn we're going to cut a whole section right out to accommodate our we're gonna cut a whole section out sorry the video got cut off there so um, we're gonna cut a whole section out and um, you can see here that it needs to be the actual horn needs to be wider so we're just gonna go back um, and highlight the first feature that we made and we're gonna just change this um, you know it can be whatever we need it to be so we'll just make it eight because it's gonna get cut anyways so there you go. Okay, so we're gonna mirror the cut that we made because it's gotta be on the opposite side as well. So we can do that just by going up to mirror and then picking the uh, the, the appropriate plane, which is the, the middle plane there, and then selecting the feature that we wanna mirror, which in our feature, in our feature tree, it's the cut. And then we say, okay. Okay, so that's one piece of the pedal, okay? So the next step is to just do a radial pattern, um, and we're gonna just create an axis that represents the middle of the horn. That's reference geometry and then axis, and you can see the yellow line there. That's gonna be the axis to which we revolve our radial pattern. So just go on linear pattern, we can pull down menu and go circular pattern. And we're gonna do, um, we have an option just to do bodies. I'm just gonna see if I can just pick the body. Okay. Um, and then it's 22 and a half degrees. And actually it's gonna be 45. 45 and eight pedal. So I can actually just bump it up, it goes around, completes the horn, and so we click OK. And there you have it. So that's what we want to build. And so actually, um, <laughs> it's given us all the flat patterns for all of them. We don't really need that. Um, we just need the flat pattern for one. Um, but this gives us a good idea of what we got to build. Now, um, this would be actually hard to glue together 
because you'd be having to glue the edges. Um, but what we want to do is just put a wall in here um, that can act as a support. And so each petal is going to have a wall on either side. And so we'll build all the petals and then we'll just glue the walls together. So um, that'll make a nice rigid structure. So um, we can do that. So we, we don't really need the circular pattern like we know that it's going to work. Um, so we can just suppress this for now and go in and then we can pick our flat pattern and unsuppress it. So we can see here, this is the actual shape that we need. Um, and this would have been virtually impossible to calculate without the software. It's giving us extremely accurate results. Um, it's It's got the lines, but I mean, we're making this out of paper. We're gonna cut it and we know kind of as we're cutting it, we can kind of just smooth, smoothly cut along and it'll end up being actually more accurate um, as we because of the way we cut it okay all right okay so we're gonna size the horn now I've got the six inches to represent the edge of the woofer and you can see here that we sized it a little too big so we're just gonna uh, scale the sketch entities so scale entities and then click the base point and then we're gonna just make it smaller so you can see here that, that's about right um, we want it to be loading the woof or the high frequencies to about 2K. Um, and I just know from experience that you're gonna need it at about this big. So we, we click okay. And we just exit the profile. So the next step is to create the sidewall shape that we're gonna need to also cut out. And then um, we're gonna probably gonna do some tabs on the on the sidewall that it can be bent 90 degrees just to glue into the the horn part so to do that we're just gonna make um, an assembly out of this um, actually we gotta save it always remember to save your work so uh, we'll just call this John Michael LeCleish horn we'll call it part one uh, sounds good Okay, and it's gonna put this part into an assembly. So we don't, we just wanna put it right in the middle of the assembly. Okay, and then we're gonna insert um, a new part in here. So <clears throat> it gets a little bit tricky. We want our new part to be on this plane. Um, a couple ways to do that. We can just click on three points to create the plane. So we can go insert. It's going to be a reference geometry plane, and we can make it uh, this point, uh, this one, and this. Oops. Do that. Pick that again. I didn't want it an edge. I wanted it a spot right there. Okay, that's good. And then we're going to make a sketch. So uh, we're going to insert a component on that plane. So we're going to insert a new component, and it's going to make that the base of the of the new component. work here. New part. There we go. Okay, so then we're just going to uh, extract these edges from, from the other part. So we're not like redrawing anything. We're just pulling. And, it, and actually SolidWorks is nice because it, it parametrically links the uh, data from all the other parts in the assembly so that if anything else changes, um, for example, if we change the shape of this horn, um, it'll automatically change the, see these little boxes? That's telling me that they're parametrically linked. So, okay, so we've done that. We're just gonna create a, a small ridge that the paper can start at as we bend the paper around. So we'll just make like an eighth of an inch ridge and then we just need to connect it back to um, the throat of the horn. So just pick a three-point arc from here uh, down to here. Okay, so we're gonna make a, a surface from that sketch that we created just by going up to uh, extruded boss. Okay, so we're gonna extrude it um, just and though, like, because it's paper, right? We don't need to get super 
thick with it so um, we gotta extrude it in the right direction though so we're gonna click OK <clears throat> okay so there you have it um, that's gonna give us our wall that we can um, have a guide for the shape and also allow us to glue the petals of the horn together okay but still again um, this is gonna be fairly tricky to actually glue on because it's hard just to glue an edge um, so we're just gonna put some tabs coming off of this this wall um, so that we have something that we can glue easily too so to make the tabs we just have to convert our part into a sheet metal part so we go to insert sheet metal base flange and we'll just pick the the face of the part as the base of our sheet metal and click OK and then so you can see here in our feature tree it's created it as a sheet metal and so the reason I did that is because it's from this point on it's really easy just to uh, extrude tabs out from these edges so um, I believe it's sheet metal and then just an edge flange like that so we can actually just come out with it um, so you can see there uh, so yeah like we don't want to do that one um, we'll probably do maybe this one and it doesn't we know that it's gonna be paper so we don't need to make it like the right angle um, it's just gonna come out and we'll just set it at 0.5 and say okay okay and I'm just gonna repeat these features um, at, at random spots going up uh, the horn okay so I'm gonna do that right now okay so we have our part now I've added all the rest of the tabs in our sidewall I should say and so if we open this up in its own environment the part environment um, we can go into the flat pattern features and then we can actually flatten uh, to get our flat shape sheet metal flat shape and we're gonna uh, throw this into a drawing uh, scaled one to one so um, take this part make a drawing from the part uh, the size needs to be eight and a half by eleven as letter size so that's um it's already inputted it here in metric which is fine so so we're gonna put our part in and we just need to make sure that it's scaled one to one so down here use custom scale one to one and we're also gonna bring in on the same sheet um, our uh, Lecliche horn profile of the horn itself so <clears throat> gonna go model view and we're gonna pick part one and uh, the next step and then here uh, we have the choice to do flat pattern I don't know if you saw it there but it's loading so that's that's actually loading the flat shape which takes a bit of processing power to do that okay so we can just throw it in okay so it's it's actually autom it's automatically scaled the the view so we're gonna go back into our settings and change the view, the scale of the view to be one to one like everything else and I've also added a, a second uh, shape here this is a, just a copy of the first so that we have our two sidewalls and then the, the so we'll print this sheet eight times and that'll be our uh, cutouts for our eight pedal horn okay so we're ready to print and so I'm just gonna click print here and we're gonna see what this looks like I just have a standard uh, laser printer and it's just mono monochrome printer and when you print you want to make sure that the settings is set to uh, just to scale and that it's not um, scale to fit okay so you don't want it changing the size when you actually get to the print stage so here we are um, so you can see that it's got the profile for the horn and then it's also got our two sidewalls so we'll print this eight times and we'll cut each piece out and then we'll glue it all together to to make our horn we could go with some thicker paper but um, really it's actually just going to act as a substrate for spraying on uh, some sort of an epoxy or or to stiffen it right up and then once it's you know you can layer it um, I think and then uh, even fill in the back side of the horn with like like foam or spray foam or something like that so uh, let's get started with cutting this out and I forgot one thing um, it's very important just as an added check I put a dimension um, on on the the sheet um, so that you can actually just physically measure 
to ensure that it came out at the right scale because you know um, there's a lot of uh, variables involved in this not coming out exactly right so Okay, so I've cut the little piece out of the sidewall and I've bent the flanges up. You can see it there. And then I've got the other one. And then I also have this cut out here. Um, so the next step is I have my glue and I'm just going to have a brush here to, to spread it around thinly and then uh, put it all together. So, um, yeah, so here we go. Okay, so here we have uh, one of eight petals, and I'm going to have to continue to do this uh, eight times and then glue them, these all together to make my horn. So I'm just going to check to make sure it fits up nicely to the coaxial driver as well. Okay, so I'm just going to try the fitment up into place, and uh, actually that's not going to quite work because um, it's going to hit here. I have to be at a 20 degree exit angle. And it's not, yeah, the rollback is going to have to be smaller. Um, going to have to change the profile a little bit. So I got to go back to the drawing board on this one. It's a good thing I checked at this stage. Didn't go too far with it. Uh, no big deal. Just quick redesign SolidWorks and then print out a different shape. So here we go. So what I've done is I've drawn the the rest of the geometry of the the base cabinet so um, f this is the cone of the woofer and then I have the surround and then that pops out like the ridge and then the second ridge there and then the the rest of the base cabinet and you can clearly see that it interferes um, I'm just moving the horn around it would have to be way out here um, to clear the both the cone and the the uh, mounting front baffle of the base cabinet which is not what I expected. It would basically be like a 20 degree conical horn transitioning into like a Lecliche profile, which I don't know if that's going to work very well or not. Um, this is getting to be bigger than what I had thought it could be. Um, so I'm going to take a step back and I'm going to uh, take some foam paper and come out of the horn and connect it directly up to the front face of the base cabinet and just do some measurements uh, of the high frequency there's the cat and and just make sure that uh, that we are going down the right path that uh, eliminating the sharp transitions that we talked about earlier um, is going to help with the high frequency see if it's worth um, going to all this effort Okay, so what I've done here is I've drawn the Summer Rain base cabinet and just because I need to have some geometry to work with for designing the what I was mentioning earlier with the horn coming out and contacting the outside of the cabinet. So I've drawn it in here and so what it would be is uh, I'll maybe make this out of foam paper to start and it's our uh, pedal horn and each segment you can see here um, is going to be just bent into the horn and then I've uh, it's made a special shape here to allow um, the sound for the woofer to come through so um, it's just a kind of a work in progress of what we might do and uh, we'll see i um, going to continue to work on it and tweak it a little bit and uh, start cutting some foam paper and taking some measurements so this is it for this week um, next week stay tuned um, I'll probably build this and then do some measurements and, and see what it sounds like